This episode is brought to you by Field Notes. Okay, travel accessories. Long haul flight <laughs> travel tips. Exactly how to travel. All of this is bull like a professional. One bag, so it's made for this. Solo traveling, maybe with a buddy or something like that. Maybe you need to learn how to travel because you're going on a trip with a friend and you don't want to have too many bags or not enough stuff or be the one that's a drag when you're traveling. I want to, I'm going to guide you through Everything that I've learned from almost probably two decades of traveling with, uh, with one carry-on bag. Because we go to travel to change, to learn, to grow, and to come back to where we're from and see it fresh. Okay, the ideal setup is you are traveling with one bag that fits under the seat in front of you on the airplane with just enough room for your feet on either side. This way, you can be the last person on the plane, all right? You don't have to fight for overhead space. You don't have to pay extra to get into, you know, an exit row or something like that, which I talk about a travel hack. If you can do that, do that. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of travel is like fighting over the overhead bin, getting in line, hoping you check in early enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you can travel with a bag that fits under the seat in front of you, that is the ultimate travel hack. Most of you are balking at the idea of that. Like there's not enough space, there's not enough. I get it, most people are not like, but that's kind of the holy grail. You do that once and you'll see, oh my God, I have no worries. I can be the last person on the plane. I've got my headphones on the entire time. I roll up, throw my bag right there. I have everything with me through the duration of the flight. You'll feel the kind of independent freedom that comes with that, which is kind of rare in today's day and age. Have you noticed that like in flying, there's all these humans crammed in like cattle. It's a really unnatural sort of skittish sort of thing. Like it's probably why some of you are like watching videos about travel going like, can I do that? Is that, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Next best travel thing is an overhead bag, big, big backpack overhead or luggage, like a roller luggage, right? Overhead with a small bag that fits inside of that. So when you get to and fro, you've got just one thing to roll or carry. The new version of this bag from Packed, I will link to this below, as well as a link to all my favorite travel bags. I have reviewed probably hundreds. This is one I helped design, and they just put out a 2.0. That second version of this bag actually has a little day bag that's designed to fit inside of it. So I get there, I put this up in the overhead compartment, I have my little day bag under my seat. But when I'm in transit, the little bag goes in here and I still just have one thing to carry. Hands free, hold my water bottle, throw my water bottle in the water bottle compartment, have my phone, get in the Uber, like do all the things hands free. Don't have to roll anything, don't have to get over cobblestone, right? Third best is you have uh, either two, a big backpack on your back and a little one on front. Come on Euro travelers, you've seen this before. I've done this a lot, it's not bad. You get more, you have more space, you have more stuff. The little one goes under the seat in front of you, the big one goes in the overhead compartment, right? Or Roller luggage with a backpack. Carrying two things, but you've got a backpack, roller luggage, mostly hands-free. Okay, that's the third best. And then the fourth best is checking something in, which if you do that, you gotta make sure you have your medicines and any essential items with you because luggage can and sometimes does get lost. Can we talk for a second about roller luggage versus backpack? Here's the deal, man. Cobblestone streets and sandy beaches and all sorts of stuff can make for roller bags being kind of kind of a bummer sometimes. A lot of people feel more grown up and safer or, or like smoother with this. I've always been this guy. I've, everybody in my family is one bag. And then sometimes when we're living someplace for a month or two or three, we take this big Eagle Creek roller. Getting a good backpack or roller bag or just something that you like the, the feel of and the zippers are not gonna break. The buckles are not gonna break. The wheels are not gonna break. The handle is not gonna break. When you are in some foreign country, pardon my French. That's why, for example, for me, for roller luggage right now, like Eagle Creek, although roller luggage video coming soon and there's some fun stuff. Subscribe for more of that. There's a really big difference between how I pack for a short trip or for a long trip. Let's talk about some clothing next, but let me say this. There is no gear shortcut that can more impact your travel stuff than a kind of resilience and a patience, a sort of ability to be satisfied with less, right? That said, there's almost never a time in transit where I don't have something interesting to read or listen to or watch or like write in. 
Field Notes sponsored this episode. The perfect size for like a season of thoughts. I was with my daughter the other day and because I had this notebook in my pocket, she started writing in it. We were writing activities that we can do like the silk dodge and a race. I fucking, I just, I love, I love the way she spells at six years old. They sent over another package and there's something in here. Oh, wow. Whoa, that is some leather, my friends. Okay, I was hoping there'd be a Fisher Space Pen in here because that's probably the pen option I would go for, for a pen in my pocket. Though, you see this little pen? I will link to that below. I've been using it for a really long time. It's gotta be running out of ink soon. I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> at that point. Here's their one of their cool like foil cover ones. I think these are only available in the subscription. They have a quarterly subscription, all right? It's like, it's what I would do if I'm in the mode of, I'm gonna do more by hand. And then you've got some wallet stuff. But honestly, this Expedition one is the one I've been using most recently. The paper is very durable. It's like waterproof kind of paper. I don't know what it is, but you notice it when you're writing. When you're making notes about your life, it can affect how you live. Looking through a notebook like this is very, very different than looking through um, uh, like a phone notes or emails or something like that. You can just see at a glance the kinds of things that you were doing. And there's something about writing by hand too. Well, I'll save some of that for when we talk about recording the trip. Now, a huge tip here. Thanks to Field Notes for supporting this episode. With clothing, you do not need to prepare for every situation, okay? In fact, Rick Steves, the guru, says, in fact, you wanna plan for the best situation. Like, you pack for the best situation, which sounds kind of weird, right? A lot of us, we think of packing and we're like, well, I need to bring this. I probably should bring two of those in case somebody doesn't have it, right? No, don't do that. That's so dumb, stop it. So pull up the weather and just look at the spread and the projection of where the weather's supposed to be and know that that's like, it, it may be different from that and don't go like, I can't believe it's different than that when you get there because then you just sound like a bad American traveler. Number two, this is known advice at this point. Capsule, wardrobe, if possible. We're talking about layers that work with each other, okay? You've gotta think about the kind of trip that you're on. Are you mostly in a metro urban area doing nights out and pubs and cafes and like co-working spaces and office stuff? Are you out in the countryside doing some like hikes and some outdoorsy type of shit? You know what I've noticed is that my modern techie clothing ends up working really well in both of those. I think that's why I'm into those clothing, which I'm, I'm gonna recommend in a second. Here's my big tip, and this is part of the whole planning thing. Just start making a list of the things you will be doing when you are there, starting with sleep, all right? So I'm gonna sleep, I'm gonna go on a run, I'm probably gonna do a walk on the beach, I'm probably gonna do drinks with friends in like at, at a restaurant or pub. I'm probably gonna have some cafe morning where I'm reading and working. I'm probably gonna work back at the, at the Airbnb or the hotel. I'm probably gonna swim at some point. Making a list of the activities helps me get past all this like, what do I need to have? I should have this, I should have that. Just then you start packing together, grouping it together based on those activities and Finding items that do double duty. For example, a workout short that's also a swim trunk. This is a great example of, I'm gonna bring a pair of board shorts because I can go on a run, I can do the beach in them, I can do the pool in them, and I only need one, right? Quick dry, probably best. I'll link to some of my favorites below. Just grab these from my closet. Lightweight pants, technical material. Quick dry, moisture wicking, like stretchy enough, right? that take up a little, just a very little space in the bag, that are really lightweight in the bag as well, it's the perfect pant. There's lots of other pants out there. My favorite is what I'll link to below. In fact, I'll probably update my whole clothing for men thing at matterful.co. I will wear these and I may not have any other pants with me. I'll have these and a pair of board shorts and a pair of 
like sweat shorts that I sleep in every night with a long sleeve. Like this is literally my jammies from last night. I always sleep in like a long sleeve for some reason. Sometimes the air conditioner's funky in the hotel or Airbnb. So think about those as essentials. Like these I have on, they're not in the bag. Board shorts, jammy shorts, and one of these. That's everything. Throw a couple t-shirts on there, maybe a pair of underwear and a sandals. I live in these when I'm out and about. These are my hiking sandals, these are my running sandals. These are sometimes, I mean, if you're going to Scotland and it's raining or whatever, like not, not what I would choose. But I'll link to these below. Any sort of on the foot, again, I run in these. So I'm a little bit of a weirdo that way, at least when I'm on travel. Because when you're packing multiple shoes, you're really taking up a lot of space in the bag. So always wear your biggest, fattest, heavier shoes. You always wear those when you're in transit. And you can get a pair of like thin, barefooty type shoes and a pair of sandals in your bag and they don't take up much space at all. It is great to have like a very thin outer shell, but this one's great from Seed On. It is just a windbreaker though. I would not travel with this. I would not. I You wanna get one that's super, super thin, but it's also water resistant, okay? I will link below to one. I know Z-Packs makes a great one, but I haven't used it yet. You want the thinnest, smallest possible thing that just crunches down into nothing. I have rain jackets that are a little bit thicker, which are great, but rain jacket like that is the might need it. It's like, it would be cool if it fit into a fanny pack or a sling or something, you know, that you just, you might need it. That with a kind of a, like a merino hooded sweater layer. This one's from Aviator and I really, I, I really dig it. This one's made for being in the airplane. It has like an extra large hood so that you can do this, which I've done a lot before and it doesn't work that great. I'll tell you my advice on eye mask here in a little bit. Western Rise also makes a really great version of, of this kind of merino sweater. This plus a rain jacket and a t-shirt underneath, like there's very few things. Obviously there's some trips that are, it's colder than that even. That's when you need the ultimate, like the puffy jacket is so warm. If you have this and a puffy jacket and a rain shell on the outside, a really thin rain shell on the outside, you're like, you're in snow. Even though it takes up more space in the bag, that kind of puffy is something that I have always traveled with when I'm going to someplace cold because the puffy can cover me through everything, through every kind of, of weather for the most part, right? I'll link, I've always used this, Anyways, I'll link below. I'll find something to link to below. I do like uh, t-shirts. I live in t-shirts and I do like when I'm traveling to go for Merino because it is more wrinkle resistant. Like, look at this, there's wrinkles in that. But if I put that on within, within 30 minutes, those wrinkles are just gone. The warmth of the body just spreads them out. It's supposed to be better for smell and all this stuff. I'm not too, t I mean, my armpits will stink, but my shirts tend not to. Anyways, this one is from Proof and it's probably, the smoothest, um, Merino has a tendency to get a tiny bit itchy. I don't know if you've noticed that. And it, this one's probably the smoothest, least itchy, and this one's not itchy at all, it feels pretty dang good. Yeah, because it's got nylon in it too. It's like 13% nylon. I'll link to that below, probably my favorite Merino tea. When you get a good Merino tea, get a few of them in different colors, a creamy white, a blue, a green, to like check out what your, what your eyes look like. My wife always said I looked good in green shirts because I have greenish eyes. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. So I, I always focus on green. If you are doing a lot of sun type stuff, if you're doing a lot of sun stuff, you may wanna bring, you, I tend to like to have a hat if I'm out about it all. Or I actually really love having a sun hoodie. So one thing to kind of, if this wasn't black and if it was more of an outdoorsy, maybe a thicker, synthetic instead of merino. It wouldn't be quite as warm and have great temperature regulating the, the way that this does for such a thin item. It actually keeps me really warm. Um, but an outdoorsy sun hoodie that I can wear instead of having sunscreen. Uh, I've done that a lot. Lots of hiking and mountaineering and beach type stuff where I'm, I have a hood on with my long sleeve hoodie made out of bamboo from Free Fly. I'll link to that below. And I love it. I love it. Having one of those is great. I don't, I don't travel with sunscreen. And then for hats, uh, like here's an example of a crushable, simple, travelable 
hat from Western Rise. I think they've upgraded this a bit since uh, this is like the like probably like one of the very first ones they made. Um, but it's nice because you can travel with it, and this is my running hat nowadays. I oftentimes will wear like a funky little bucket hat or something to keep the sun off of me. Socks wise, I don't know if you've ever seen these kinds of toe socks. Don't knock it till you tried it. These are in Gingy, they're merino with the toe thing. Because sometimes you do more walking than you're used to when you're traveling. But, depends on your footwear. Now, let's talk about packing cubes, okay? Packing cubes. There's these ones from Peak Designs. If you want to just buy some packing cubes that are going to be the things you stick with for forever. These are great because they expand, you fill them up, and then they compress. You zip it down and it compresses. Your stuff will have more wrinkles in it. So when you get there, you want to pull stuff out of this. I have actually fallen in love with having a bag that has multiple segments like this, okay? So I can have clothing on one side and normally tech gear on the other, but because it's, it's thinner, it's like two and a half, maybe three inches on either side, I can, I can operate in this thing without, without packing cubes. So I can just open up my bag, I have visibility on everything. Right? I tend to leave that bag open up and I just slide it underneath the bed. So I pull that out and I've got a little dresser there. I can rifle through everything. I can see it all visually, right? And then shove it right back. I've just done a lot of travel with that bag and that's probably as my preferred mode at this time because I'm, I'm not in the mode where it's like, use the packing cube to compress and bring as much as possible. I can compress fine in that when I need to. Which brings me to a huge, a very, like a massive, a massive point here, okay? Don't overstuff your bag. It will make every interaction with your bag more shitty. You gotta feel out your packing for your clothes, right? Just feel it out and start to trust your gut over time. The only thing that's going to teach you how to do this better is more travel. You will get out there, you will wish you had something that you don't have, you will, you will come home and you realize you have five things in your bags you didn't even pull out the entire time. Make a little note, bro. Put it in your journal. Put it in a notepad, something, so you can, next time you just have a little thing you pull up, like travel notes in your, in your phone or something, right? You'll get better over time. And travel is, is really rewarding because you have all these different new experiences and all these learnings and things like that. And you're also kind of putting your gear together over time. I'm the kind of geek that, that, that is its own reward. But get this through your head. Things do not have to be perfect. Your packing, there's no such thing as perfect packing. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Use a small toiletry bag, okay? This is mine, actual, my actual toiletry kit. This is from Gravel. There's also this one from Matador, which I'll show you some really fun Matador toiletry type products here in a second. They sent over a bunch of stuff, not sponsored. I do have like lotion from a hotel, a tiny little stick of of deodorant, some chapstick, some nail files, and a nail clipper, some old, some ancient, you know, smell fragrance stuff for men. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is Matador's refillable toothpaste thing. This actually works pretty good. I used, I used it super easy to unclip and fill up and fill back up. I don't know, it's just ingenious. They have all these little, great little things here. Like this is their fluids thing, you pop this open, and you fill it with your shampoo or your soap. Why are you doing that? Why are you, do you think the hotel or the Airbnb isn't gonna have that stuff? I have still never traveled with soap or shampoo. I argue, but I also, I'm, I'm not like persnickety about like what shampoo I'm using or what soap I'm using. Like I would put, if I needed to, I'd put Dr. Bronner's in this, that'd be fine. But why are we doing that? You can use dry powdered soap and stuff too. Um, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing that for? Tell me in the comments. One little trick here is I have, uh, I have earplugs here. Matador make a little earplug holder thing too, but I always have these. Earplugs are clutch. Airplanes, uh, Airbnbs that have loud air conditioners. Matador also make this cool, um, like pill thing? Their little accessories are incredible. My challenge with this is this isn't enough pills for me. I I will talk about it in a second, but we have, I, I'm into a lot of supplements when I travel because your body is going, you're putting your body through a lot more uh, 
a lot more shit than normal. But if I had like pills I need to take other, every day for, for medicine and this would get me through it, like this is really nice. But my tip on this is just live out of, live out of yours. Put everything away in the drawer, like put it all away and, and just live out of yours. This is their mini. They also gravel make bigger ones. I'll link to these below, friends of the show. Um, this is, I love this one. I've lived in this for a very long time. Essential technology, okay? Your phone, all right? Your phone, your phone's charger, and a battery pack, okay? These, these three things, by the way, I do have a podcast. I haven't put out an episode in a while, but I do have a podcast. You can get by with this. This is just one, this was my brother's, so it's like near and dear to me now. I keep looking for this, some lechi, I don't know who makes this anymore. It's not a thing. It's like one of those no-name things. It has multiple different cords built in, and then it has the plug just built in. This thing is genius. It's arguably a little little big, for, but like you could talk all day long about what you need to have. If you have one of these that has a USB micro, a lightning, and a USB-C, which this has, and it plugs into the wall, this is the, this is the best I've found. Please, if you know of one that's like this, put it in the comments below because I want to I want to promote it. Your phone and your battery, this goes a long way to getting you into every Airbnb and hotel that you need to get into, to talking to, you know, looking up on eater.com where the best place to eat in Athens is, which is when I found, how I found Feyruz, and I'm so glad I did. It was incredible. I can do all my work from this. I can, I can make, I can stay in touch with friends. I can, I can, you know, just remember all you need when you travel is this. If you had none of this, it, actually, arguably all I need is this. So if I just had a process of keeping this charged, this is it. I could do a video traveling a lot of places with just this and the clothes I have on my body. Anybody want to sponsor that? <laughs> Holler at your boy. I only say that to, to just remind you that it's really, really, really simple. When you get out there in the world, it's so easy to get caught up in, I need to have this, and what if I don't have that, and I can't forget this, and yada, yada, yada. When really, you get out there, you have this, you have your phone, you have your video camera, you have your communicator, you have your ability to find stuff. You know, it's, it's so simple and that kind of simplicity can actually be really intoxicating and can really get you out of some ruts in your life and some common ways of thinking that you're just per pervaded by. And from that space, you'll be glad you have a, something to write with or make a voice note because you'll go like, hey, why, am I, why has my thinking gotten so uptight about this, man? So another essential tech thing for me is my Bellroy three card case that fits on my phone. It protects my phone. I dig that, that's fine. But I've got my wallet. Everything that I need right here, three cards. And then this is super strong, super strong connection. This is by far my favorite case that I've used to date. For me, I am always traveling with my laptop, always, everywhere. So I've got to have a charger. Now, I'm using Apple's charger right now because my other ones got lost. I have always been a fan of multi-port GAN, G-A-N chargers, right? Even though they can be persnickety. They're like 100 watts and all you have is your laptop plug in and it's only getting like, it's not even like charging. It's just like staying at a level. And you're like, what's going on with these? I will link to my favorite ones below. Um, you have to make sure you don't go for one, if possible, that's long. Like there's some that are long because I don't know if you're noticing that every power plug in the world, every cafe, it just falls right out of, right? Just falls right out of those sorts of things. So you want to find one as small as possible or one that has a built-in sort of bring your own little like longer extension cord thing. I also almost always am traveling with my iPad, which I only use, you want to talk about not being a minimalist, you can, you can accuse me of that. I only use for downloading shows. I just download, in fact, I needed to do it today. I need to download a bunch of shows and videos for my flights and for my in-between stuff. This is all I use this thing. I try to use it for real shit, for work. But that's all I use it from. I could do that on this. I just like doing it on this. I'm okay with doing it. I'm okay with taking that travel. To that point, this is one, this is a really interesting, fun little product, okay? So it's a stuff sack from Tom Bin. So you use it to pack some shit up. If I can get this out. Throw your underwear or your socks or, or your, your whatever. So throw something in here that's not, that's not too dirty. Throw, throw, you know, 
a bunch of shit in here. Maybe it's like your tech pouch and you just pull this thing closed and then when you get there, you pull this out and now you've got your own little kind of your tech tray, right? You could even use this as like a, as probably, I don't know, it's not water tape seam, it's like a dog bowl almost. But this just goes on the, uh, and you've got, if you're traveling all the time, this kind of thing by the bed that all of your stuff goes into, I would maybe like cut a little hole and have my cords coming in through my charger, like some bedside charger setup. And then that bedside charger setup just goes in here and I, that kind of thing when you're traveling a lot can bring a lot of comfort. Most of you probably aren't in that boat, but some of you are. If you are, holler in the comments. Tell me what you're like nice to have thing. I don't need to have it, it's just nice to have it. I choose to do that. That's what my iPad's like. I include this for that reason. Now you gotta have a good travel adapter for if you're going out into Europe or Africa or South America or wherever, right? I always do the Epica one. I'll link to it below. It's just highly reviewed. It's got USB ports on it and stuff and it's, it works perfect. It's fine. I tend to just plug this guy into that, but there are, you can USB-C right directly to your laptop depending on your shit. Anyways, it's nice. You gotta have a good one of those and it's like 20 bucks. Also, another weird one for me, these are my Bluetooth headphones that I use right now. Of course, like shocker that the $800 headphones are my favorites. They really are. They're really, really comfortable and they sound, they sound good. They're, they're pro I wonder, I've always wanted to compare them to the Bose to see which one's actually quieter. These just feel so good. They sound great obviously too. And I didn't have to pay for them. I got them for a review, which is cool. Um, but I have like the Apple AirPod or the Apple Max over there. I don't, they fall off my head. I also have the Apple AirPods. I bring these and these. These I can't, they don't sit comfortably in my ears over long periods of time. Um, they don't have quite, they don't have nearly the same kind of battery life. So even though it takes up a big space in my bag, another thing that I'm, that I'm bringing because I also will edit videos and do a lot of work with this and this doesn't have the battery life that I need on longer flights. Packable backpack. This one's from Matador. I also really like the Go Pack from Air. I'll link to both of these below as well as probably my link to all packable bags. Um, there's a bunch of these out there. I love Matador packs. They're just, there's, this is big water bottle compartments decent little, like perfect little day bag. Great, like, like I'm in Greece, I'm going to the beach for the day, throw a towel and a book and a water bottle and you're good to go. Fanny pack, waist bag, bum bag. I just did a whole video on these. This is basically my favorite from a travel perspective. Straps come out of here, I just leave them gussied up. This is a trick because you can actually put a lot of stuff in this when you are in transit and most airlines don't count this as one of your bags. So you have this, a day bag, and a travel bag. And anyways, all your all your essentials are in this right on your waist on the plane. It's good for under the shirt, like in front of you from a say a security standpoint, if you're security minded like that. I mean, we all are security minded, but you know, if you're really worried about it. I'll link to this below because I, I just love how durable this material is and how just, this is one of my favorite products in the entire world. I just, I just love it. On that point, like, I don't know where I would include these. I. I almost never wear sunglasses. I don't believe we should wear sunglasses. I believe that your eyes being exposed to the sun actually affects the way that your skin interprets that sun. So when we're wearing UV protecting glasses, our, like we're, our brain, our system, our nervous system isn't getting the kind of signals that it might need to properly handle the sun. Anyways, that said, I look really cool in these, like a steampunk worship leader or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. But these, fold down into nothing. Have you seen those foldable glasses that fold into like a brick? What are you, you're not helping me. I'd rather you be just regular and thin and long and I'll find a protective case for it. This on the other hand, I don't know where my case is. A little silicone case. I will link to these below. This is epic to have because you can actually throw them into a bag and forget that they're there and sometimes it's useful. And while we're talking glasses, I swear, I kid you not, I travel with these for nighttime. There's some, there's some brand I'm, I'm hoping to work with that I think make higher quality and have do more tests. And, but these were like 12 bucks on Amazon. 
amber color blue locking blue locking glasses. I put these on at night when I'm watching TV or reading or something, and it starts to signal to my brain to mellow out, which is a huge deal when you're in a different time zone. Okay? I swear to God, this is not a packable glasses. <laughs> this is such a cumbersome little shape to pack for. I travel with these every time I travel. Snacks! Being hangry doesn't help anybody. I go to Whole Foods just before I leave, typically, the day before, and I just grab a bunch of different snack bars and a bag of trail mix. Trail mix is a great way to get some good calories from fats and from like some actual sustaining kind of foods in you if you're just eating like airy oils fried with some wheat and crackery type stuff. You're not getting, you're getting a lot of munching and you're getting all this like tongue sensation, but you're not getting a lot of something that's actually gonna make you feel uh, feel nourished and, and full. In fact, there was this stuff I used to talk about all the time, I haven't reached out to them in forever, called Super Fat. I loved traveling with that. It's just it's like this like nut butter, really, really good mix of nut butter that isn't, isn't super dry. And it would just make you, you would just have a little more fullness feeling. Because being hangry, that doesn't solve anything. Flew to Africa uh, last year and, and I look at my bag on the way out there, you know, it's like a 16 hour flight. And I'd just be like, I have all these bars to choose from. Mm, do I want to go with the Pro Bar that's 23 grams of sugar, but it's really yummy? <laughs> yeah, we'll do that one. Water bottle. Arguably going with an insulated water bottle is like more heavy and more heft than you need at all, but I've, I've come to love it. I used to do plastic. I don't like plastic when it's sitting in the sun, even if it's BPA free, Titan, yada, yada, yada. I just don't, I just, I don't like to be buying a bunch of bottles all over the place. I'm talking about single use plastic water bottles and how they're killing <laughs> dolphins and I love the dolphins, right? I do. And so I don't like to do the single use plastic thing. I've always carried a water bottle like this. I always have to have water because there's not enough. I'm not gonna ask her every time for a little glass of water to sip on in these little sing single use plastic cups and shit like that. I'm just gonna fill this up once because you know what? I am actually gonna put hydration packs in here. I am going to put salts like Element or Mantra Labs. Mantra Labs is probably my favorite from its vitamins and mineral setup. I'll link to both of those below. Uh, good flavors, make it flavor the water. It makes you drink it a bunch. When you're traveling and you're in an aluminum tube under pressure at 30,000 feet, like your body's just going, what is going on? Like this is crazy. Give it a bunch of water to process a bunch of shit. Just give it a bunch of, get up and pee a bunch. You're gonna be dealing with germs from everywhere all over the place, just flush your system. Give yourself vitamins and nutrients. To that point, I do bring a lot of supplements, specifically immune aid supplements. If there's one that I have to take, it's Wellness Formula. I'll link to that below. It's just like, got a bunch, and I'll hit two or three of those. Just bam, like every every few hours on the plane or something sometimes. Um, and then when I, when I get there, it's nice. It's just nice to have that buffer beforehand and afterwards to fill up my immune system's sort of strength. Lots of vitamin C, lots of herbal type things in that one pill, which I dig. Then the second thing that I love to bring is magnesium. Magnesium pills can help you absolutely take better shits in the morning. <laughs> if you overdo it, you're gonna, you're gonna have some gooey shits. But if you get the dose right, it helps you go to sleep, which can help you really uh, organize your, your biology to the new time zone that you're in, stuff like that. Jet lag, by the way, the best tools that I've had for this is waking up early, watching the sunrise, doing physical exercise, spending time barefoot, outdoors, getting your fucking billion year old nervous system into the place that you're actually in. Watch the sunrise, watch the sunset. Like the, the first minute of the sunrise, the last minute or two of the sunset, you can stare directly at it because it's going through so much atmosphere, right? It's so doled out and it's a powerful, like sort of ancient practice too. Barefoot, this might sound like craziness to you, but it's the best thing that I've found for jet lag. There's these pills you could take once an hour on the plane and this, that, and the other. Magnesium, barefoot, physical exercise, spend time in large bodies of water, watch the sunset and the sunrise. Mm. Let's talk about trip reporting. This kind of notebook and this kind of camera. Now this is a Fuji X100 something something. I think they're more, there's a Ryko GR2 or three, which is even smaller and I think has really juicy, moody images as well. This just takes really moody images. I love the look on it. I wear it like this. When I go out, when I leave, when I'm on travel, when I, I don't do this when I'm at home. 
When I'm gonna travel, I'll have this on me or I'll have it inside of this bag here. It's just big enough to fit in there. And I look at those pictures differently. That might be crazy to bring an extra thing when you have such a good camera here. Like throw some filters on it or something. I'm just a light and time kind of guy. I'm a photographer, I'm a, I, I think about these things. and I'm not so much of a photographer that I'm like, I'm not trying to upgrade this. I've got what I need, you know? And then a notebook for writing things at night, you're getting in bed, just write a few things you're glad that happened that day. I swear to God, you're gonna look back on that and you're gonna see these several days in a row that you wrote something that happened and this that, and you totally spaced it out and forgot. And you're, it's gonna bring something back and it might spark, oh yeah, didn't I get that guy's email address? And that's in here too and you can just go email them and you keep a little conversation going. Trip reporting, taking little notes as you go. I, I kid you not, looking back at this, this is from my notes from like my men's group last night. I look at these in a different way when I'm flipping through this as opposed to, I have a very robust digital note taking system on my phone. I live off of that, right? So switching to this is, is a big switch. This is better to look at. I can't write as much and that makes it better. Okay, long haul flight All right, all of this is bull All of this is all, this turtle neck pillow thing is bull all of these stupid neck wraparound bull You gotta walk around town with that on. You're dumb. It doesn't even hold your neck up. Look at this. This is like one of these back brace things. I've traveled more than I, like 16 hour flights to Africa is a long flight, especially when you're not flying first class. I, the first time I got to do it, my friends upgraded me to first class. Like tears, silent tears falling because I'll never be able to afford to do that again. That's not true. I won't speak that over me. Uh, but I've had to fly it, I've had to fly it a lot of times not first class, okay? The one thing that I have found, look at how dumb this thing is. But I have actually lived in this thing on the plane. So it's made for this. You know, you've got it on your airplane seat, like the, the tray in front of you. And this is coming down. Not bad. You've got a cutout in here so I can breathe. You can also kind of get away with doing it on your on your belly. It's okay. And none, none of it's none of it's good enough. Have you ever taken a sleeping pill on a plane? I did it one time a long time ago. I'll never do that again. But I found myself putting this behind me like this on the airplane seat. Just anything to extend my back a little bit. So because it decompresses and I can just put it throw it, shove it into my bag, I will probably travel with this for for a really long time. When I have long haul flights, Okay, then compression socks. You could do a lot worse than having compression socks. I will link to the ones that I got off of Amazon below. Put them on, they're supposed to help with circulation and all sorts of stuff. I'm, uh, anything that, like, like it could be placebo. And I'm way interested in that if it just takes up this much space in my bag. Uh, it has to be said that the very best eye mask in the world is this one. I don't know if you sleep somewhere where you know, I sleep in this room. This is my studio. There's little like lights everywhere. And uh, it's, uh, for the first few weeks I slept with these every night. This is the most comfortable eye mask from Manta Sleep. The, the, stop, stop. Don't go because this one's on Amazon is cheaper. Like you should get that, like stop it. <laughs> stop, you'll be fair. Everything's adjustable. It's incredible. That said, I almost never travel with this thing. Listen, nothing is more important than your travel mindset though. Okay, that's it, that's everything. Little note on this, like this is awesome. This is from Matador, it's a travel towel. You never need a travel towel. You don't. You just don't need a travel towel. I might be stupid here. You might have like situations where you're like, I really need it. And maybe like hostels, places that I'm not staying in anymore. Maybe you really do need that kind of thing. But I, I just haven't, I just, haven't. That said, this is nice uh, when you need that to know that it's there, but it just takes up space in the bag. What am I doing here? You know, there's so much like that you could have because it assuages some silly projectile fear. You know, you're like launching this rocket of fear about what I might need when I'm out there when really you don't know anything, right? I think that's okay. You don't have to know anything. You don't, you're not supposed to know that you don't know yet, right? 
So give yourself a break. Get out there and know that you can buy something that you need out there. You will not be able to buy special medication. You will not be able to buy a new phone and shit. Actually, you can, but it's like, now you need nothing. What are you gonna do? The big trick here is write down the things you're gonna do and then pack according to those things. Swim, bike, run, cafes, food, urban stuff. That can help you just organize your stuff how you need to pack. And it gets you in that mindset of like, get out there, get out there and make happen. You know, you could stay at home and be afraid of everything. Nobody's gonna stop you from doing that. It sells so much in our corporate culture. It sells so much snack food. It's so good for all of your corporate employers that you stay home and be a little like, okay, a little afraid of everything again and again and again. You don't have to. It's a, it's a lie. There is so much to be worried about in the world. Like if you're gonna get enough time with your mom before she goes. Like if that book that's in you is actually gonna get written. Like if you're gonna, you know, what's that quote about most men die at 35 and aren't buried till they're 80 or something like that. Get out and be, it's, it's okay not to know everything. It's okay to be a beginner. It's not just okay, it's fucking awesome. So pick somewhere to go. Make a decision and go. The world is worth it. Life is worth it. I hope you fall in love. <laughs> and I hope you get your heart broken. And I hope you get healed. And I hope that you make space for, for everyone. And I hope that you can learn how to be yourself. Because everyone else is taken. Thanks to Feel Notes for supporting this episode and this channel. Thanks to you for watching. Subscribe if you dig it. All of this is mentioned and way more tips at matterful.co slash travel glad. It's a free email series just about the tips and tricks for getting out there and traveling. Okay? Go to there. Sign up. Love you. Mean it. Bye.